Hi, I'm Stephanie Eckhart, one of the directors of career development here at Home Sale Realty. And today we're going to go over how to handle it in dot loop when you are working with a POA or an estate situation or an LLC. How do you prepare the documents and prepare the loop in order to be able to work in best practice with those situations? So I've already created a loop here for you to, to watch, um, just a fictitious one here. Uh, where I have like a consumer notice and a listing contract all ready to go that I have been preparing and my contact person is not the person who's actually the homeowner. So in a POA situation, there's an authorized signer. Um, in an estate situation, there is an authorized signer for the estate of, and then like in an LLC, there may be one or more authorized signers as well for that situation. So how do we set this up? That process begins in the view details. And here is where a lot of times you really want to just put the person that you've been dealing with, but you have to remember that this is a transaction. And so it has to be done in the way that the transaction is supposed to work. The homeowner is the seller, um, regardless of whether or not they are the ones doing the signing. Um, so we need to put in there that there's a, a person to be added. So let's say that Sally Seller is the person who owns the home, but is not actually making any of the decisions or doing any of the signing. Let's say that that person is going to be me instead, okay? So I would go ahead and I would put in Sally Seller because that is her name, okay? And then the contact person is going to, or the contact information is going to be that of the person who is signing on her behalf. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put in one of mine and then the role is going to be seller and we would add that person. Okay, so now it's going to be the actual homeowner's name. Clearly the email is for somebody else um, who's going to be signing on her behalf. Okay, now what if Sally Seller is, um, is deceased and now there is an estate that is selling the property? If that's the case, the name that goes in there is the actual estate of Sally Seller. And again, this time you're going to put the email of the authorized signer instead, okay? So the name that goes on the contract and on all of the information is going to be estate of Sally Seller, but it's going to go for signature to this other person, okay? And that would be the seller. Now, what about in the case of an LLC? So again, same thing, you're going to put in a person and this time the person is going to be the actual LLC if in fact it is owned by the LLC specifically and not a person, okay? And then you would put in the authorized signer's email address and then that would be the seller, okay? So that's how those would look. You would just be putting the homeowner's name, uh, who is actually titled on the property, and then just the contact information is going to be different. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and we're gonna go back out to the loop. And now you're asking yourself, well, what happens when I go to share these documents? Because now when the person pops up to sign, it's gonna say, hey, Sally Seller needs to sign here. And that's not Sally Seller. Absolutely. So here's where you're gonna need to coach and educate a little bit. Um, I need to have a conversation with the person, the authorized signer to tell them when I share these documents with you, they will be in the homeowner's name. And therefore you need to override the electronic signature to be your own. So what does that look like? Normally you would be coming in here and you would hit share and send this off to the seller. Um, I'm gonna do a quick jump for demo instead. So I've shared it. And let's say that it is the uh, Sally Seller situation, okay? So, because it's going to be the same for all three of the situations, okay? The authorized signer is going to open up their email and they're going to see the document that you want them to sign. They will hit start signing just like usual. And here is where your coaching and guidance comes into play where I have been, I've been told that as soon as I click that, it's gonna say, is this what your signature should look like? And in fact, no, it isn't. I am a POA. Okay, and so then I would override all of my future signatures to be Stephanie Eckhart POA for Sally Seller versus leaving it as Sally Seller and erroneously signing it that way, okay? So that's what it ends up looking like. Seller is Sally Seller, signer is somebody else, okay? I hope that that was very helpful for you guys. 
Um, if you have any other questions, you can certainly reach out to us to let us know, but that's going to make your life a lot easier trying to put these LLCs and other third-party type signatures in play. Have a great day.